We'll go ahead and start. Uh, would someone be willing to open us in prayer, please? Let's pray. Father God, we come before your presence in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this brand new week. And as we begin our session today, we thank you for your grace that you have empowered our teacher, Lord God. Bless her, Lord God, as she's recovering from her viral fever. Lord, I speak life, I speak health over her body, that Lord Jesus, she will recover quickly from the viral fever in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. We cover her by the precious blood of Jesus, Lord God. And also, Lord Jesus, we thank you for each one of us who, who are in the class, Lord. I pray that you will open the eyes of our understanding. You, uh, you bless us with the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we can grasp what our teacher is teaching today, Lord God. Bless her, Lord God. Use her, Lord God. And prepare each one of our hearts and be ready for the class. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much, Zeltoli. Appreciate your prayer for healing. Um, yeah, I just am um, mostly better, just have a cough. So if I get into one of those bouts in the middle of class, please excuse me. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I'm doing a lot better. Um, so we um, covered a lot last week. I'll just do a quick review. But before that, I posted our assignments. I'm not sure if all of you had a chance to look at that. I posted two assignments on the classroom. Uh, one is a reflection paper and the other is your final paper. Um, we will have one more quiz, which I'll post uh, probably the last week of the semester. And I'll give you all a week to submit the quiz. Um, but um, have you all been able to look at those assignments? Should we go over them quickly just to answer any questions? Just past if you were able to look. <laughs> Okay, okay, sure. Um, do you all have any questions? Or do you want me to uh, just go over the question a bit, uh, explain what um, you all need to do, or was it pretty clear? Uh, it's clear, but I think it will be nice to get an explanation to write a little more better. Okay, okay, sure. Um, so the first assignment, which is, um, which is due this week is a very short one uh, so i've given you all till friday right 27th october yeah uh till friday i think it'll be friday evening in indian time and uh, friday night uh, or utc um i can see some people have already handed it in that's great okay so um the question is to pick any topic from first corinthians chapter 1 to 12 and share something that you have learned personally from these chapters uh, but not only to share it in theory but how uh, how do you want to take that and apply that teaching or what you've learned to your life what kind of practical steps will you take to apply it uh, to your life so i gave you just some questions just to help you think about what you can include in the paper so uh, what topic impacted you uh, or was there something that the holy spirit um, kind of highlighted to you in these chapters uh, and then what about that impacted you? Like, why was there something specific in those, uh, in that teaching that impacted you? Um, what new revelation did you receive? Um, how, how can you take that? How does it apply to your life at present? So we want to look at present, not at some future thing that you're going to do with it, but at present, or how does what you learned apply to you? And, um, and what are some practical steps you can take to apply it to your life at present? Um, so that was the; those are the just some questions that you can think about. 
so that in case you didn't know what exactly or how exactly to write the paper, those were some questions I uh, gave. Um, for the grading, um, I, I do want if all of you to use, like to write from your own personal learning. So not to copy from uh, any website or anything outside. Um, so personal uh, and original writing. Uh, please also check your grammar, check your spellings, uh, because this is also a written paper. Uh, so that's important. If you need help, if you want to ask one of uh, another student or somebody to just look through it and give you feedback, that's a good way to get any errors corrected. Um, submission before deadline, um, answering the questions or um, like, I want to see that you've understood the question, have you answered it properly? And then keeping it within 250 to 300 words. So it's a short paper, um, but I did want us to um, not just do it as a, or do this class or do the paper as something just that is academic, um, but to be allowing what we're learning to be impacting us personally. And so this paper is important for that reason. Um, Lyndon, no, you can uh, you can type out the paper, Lyndon. I've, uh, so you have to submit it on Google Classroom. And um, I've created the document there, the Google Docs. So you can just go into the Google Doc, put your name in, in the uh, title of the document. I've given you a format for how I want your name to be put in your last name, first name, and all of that. And then um, you can put in, you can answer the question there and submit it for, on Google Classroom directly. So similar to how you did your first paper. And all of you should have got back your um, the first assignment that you turned in. I think for some people, I had some feedback and I'd asked you to resubmit. So if if uh, any of you have got that, please also check that and resubmit. Um, um, Pastor, I have a doubt about the first assignment. So yes. it, say, it says to about any topic, does it mean all it should be like one topic for all the questions or so many things that we learned, we can put it together on the paper? Uh, you can put many things. The only thing is it's a very short paper like 250 to 300, then uh, you might end up just listing many points and not fully looking at how are you going to apply it. So it won't be very, um, you won't be able to go very deep into one thing. So it may be better to choose one or two or three things that you've learned. You decide, you decide when you're writing, if you feel like there's more things you'd like to include and you're able to include it and keep the paper short, then you can go ahead and do that. Yeah, thank you. No problem. OK, so that is the first assignment that's due this Friday. And then um, you have a final paper. Now, this final paper is going to be a, a good amount of work. Uh, so I, I also just want to suggest that you'll start uh, soon, start your work on it soon. and feel free to send your work to me as you're doing it or if you have questions and I can keep giving you feedback through the process. Um, so on your final paper, uh, I've asked you to pick any topic from either first or second Corinthians and to look at that at teaching on that topic throughout the book. So if you pick a topic from second Corinthians, then you look at what Paul has taught on that topic throughout the book of 2 Corinthians, or if you're looking at 1 Corinthians, uh, eating food offered to idols, what all does Paul teach about that in the whole book? Okay, so uh, while you're looking at Paul's teaching of what, what has been said on that topic, uh, some things to look at is the historical context, the cultural context, uh, the meaning of the original Greek language. Uh, so look at those if if that is going to be relevant and it's going to help your study to look at what does the what are some words that he has used 
um, and what is the original language word that's used, what is the meaning of that word, um, and then uh, also understand what is the context within which he's writing. So uh, food offered to idols, why was he writing that to the Corinthians at this time? Um, so the context within the letters and context within scripture as a whole. Um, so we want to also take what does the rest of scripture say about food offered to idols. Um, so we'll take, we'll understand Paul's teaching in context of First Corinthians, uh, and then that in the context of all of scripture. And then you give your conclusion at the end of the paper of, so like a small summary of, uh, so this is what uh, is the teaching on this topic. Uh, you can give like a paragraph summary at the end. Uh, but through the paper, I've given you some steps for what all you do. Select the topic, uh, read the whole book and list all the teaching on that topic. Then look outside of that book in the rest of scripture, what all teaching is there on the same topic in the rest of scripture. And um, here you can use outside sources when you're looking uh, just to find out where else in scripture is this uh, topic talked about. And then um, step four is you can uh, get outside help for uh, just helping you understand what scripture teaches on this topic. So there, this is where you can do your referencing of other websites, other sources, and all of that. And then uh, step five is uh, to give your conclusion. What is your learning about this topic from this study? OK. Um, so uh, your main source of uh, understanding and inspiration is the Holy Spirit. So keep praying and uh, allowing God to reveal his truth as you're studying the scriptures. Uh, you can reference outside content, but where, whatever you're referencing from the outside, I want you to mention it in the paper that this is uh, you've used an outside source, uh, and definitely I don't I don't want to uh, have like uh, your whole paper copied and pasted from any website uh, or outside. You can reference I've I've mentioned where all you can use outside references, so you can do that. Um, again, check your grammar spellings. Check. Um, that you've answered the question thoroughly and submit your paper on time. Um, so you have until 18th November. I think that's a week before the uh, semester closes. Yeah, 18th November is a Saturday. Um, so you can submit that paper before then. But in the process of researching, like while you're selecting the topic, uh, feel free to reach out to me. You can uh, email me or post on Google Classroom. Um, yeah, reach out to me and let me know. Once you've selected the topic, then as you're doing your research, if you have questions, if you just want to check that you're doing the right thing, um, feel free to reach out to me. So yeah, any questions? Are we all good? No questions. OK. OK, great. So um, we'll go into our uh, lesson for this week. Um, I was also, uh, I've been um, trying to get the other video done, but uh, because of sickness, I've not been able to. Uh, so I I'm hoping tomorrow that I'll be able to record it uh, after. Yeah, tomorrow I also have a class tomorrow and then after that. Uh, so I'll just post it once it's done. Sorry about the delay. Okay, so um, last week we covered from chapter 12. So I'll just do a quick review. Uh, chapter 12, we looked at the spiritual gifts and where Paul is. Uh, just kind of introducing the spiritual gifts. What are the spiritual gifts? What is the purpose of the gifts? Uh, and who is the source of the gifts? The Holy Spirit, uh, God gives these gifts to 
the church for the benefit of the church and um and then he talks about all of the different ways these gifts can be utilized um then we look at um the fact that we are all one body so even though there are all these differences we all have these distinct functions and gifts within the body um, all of these things come together uh, so that we are able to serve one another and we are all united uh, as one in christ um, so that is chapter 12 and then chapter 13 is the chapter on love where he says uh, let whatever you're doing in the use of your spiritual gifts let love undergird all that you're doing um, and he goes into detail about what love looks like um, so the way love should be expressed uh, as we gather as a church and then we went into chapter 14 um, so chapter 14 he um, having introduced the gifts then talked about love undergirding all that we do uh, he then comes into the section in chapter 14 uh, comparing tongues and prophecy use of tongues and prophecy uh, within the church and um, he's saying uh, because our goal is to love one another when we come together as a church when we are using our gifts uh, he's encouraging um, use of prophecy so that other people can understand what is being said or if tongues are being used then that there be interpretation within the church gathering so uh, we must remember that here he's talking about the church gathering he's not um, he's not uh, talking about personal use of tongues he mentions it uh, briefly in between he talks about how tongues uh, is something that edifies a person uh, spiritually but it edifies that individual uh, whereas um, if there is interpretation then others can also um, can also gain understanding can also be edified spiritually if you're using tongues and also providing interpretation uh, and so um, so he's talking about these two specific gifts tongues and prophecy in this chapter so we went uh, right up to verse 15. Um, we'll continue. Let me just uh, start a little behind because that is we'll be in the middle of something. So let me go. OK, so we'll just start from verse 13. Uh, Therefore, let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the spirit and I will also pray with understanding. I will sing with the spirit and I will also sing with understanding. Um, so verse 13, he's saying, so if you're speaking in a tongue, then pray that you will interpret. Um, because uh, if, if you don't interpret, then uh, your understanding will be unfruitful. That is, you won't be able to understand what you are praying, and neither will the congregation that's gathered be able to understand. Uh, but if you have the gift of interpretation, then uh, you will be able to benefit the congregation because you can pray and you can also interpret for them. And you can sing and you can also uh, sing in words that they understand. Um, and this is, yes, in the uh, context of gathering as a congregation. So we'll go from there into verses 16 onwards. Uh, can somebody read verse 16 to 20 for us, please? Uh, can you mention the chapter again, Pastor? Uh, chapter 14. Sixteen to eighteen, right? Uh, Twenty-eight. 
just 16 to 20 and then okay. we'll start uh, yeah. first Corinthians chapter 14 verses 16 to 20 otherwise if you bless with the spirit how will he who occupies the place of the uninformed say amen at your giving of thanks since he does not understand what you say for you indeed give thanks with but the other is not edified i thank my god i speak with tongues more than you all yet in the church i would rather speak five words with my understanding that i may teach others also than ten thousand words in a tongue brethren do not be children in understanding however in malice be babes but in understanding be mature Thanks, Jeffina. Um, so he says, uh, if you so if you are not doing that, that if you are not interpreting uh, and you are not giving understanding to the listeners, uh, then even if you bless them and you're uh, blessing them, uh, speaking in tongues, um, they won't be able to receive that blessing they won't be able to say amen to what you have said because they don't know what you've said uh, and so um, they are not able to receive the blessing that you've spoken and they're not able to uh, fully um, fully appreciate the blessing that has been given to them and uh, so he talks about the place of the uninformed so uh, people who have not understood uh, what you said because you've spoken in tongues um, and uh, he says it for verse 17 so indeed you have you give thanks and that's a, that's a good thing but the other person is not edified right and so what he said clearly in chapter 12 is uh, the gifts are for the benefit of all right so if they're not benefiting people then uh, you're actually missing out on the point of why you're using the gift in the first place. Uh, verse 18. So here we see that Paul is not saying don't speak in tongues, right? He's saying I speak in tongues more than you all. Uh, and though I have this gift um, in the church, so th that's the specific thing he's talking about. In the church, I would rather speak five words with my understanding. So I would rather speak five intelligible words that other people will understand uh, than speak um, 10,000 words. So rather than speaking a lot in tongues, I'd rather just speak a little bit and actually communicate something that will benefit the other person who is listening. Um, and then verse 20, do not be children in your understandings, but be wise. So uh, he's saying be be children when it comes to evil, but when it comes to understanding and maturity in spiritual things, uh, be uh, you need to grow up. So um, there's a right place for being like a child and there's a right place for being a mature adult. Um, so be like a child with regard to evil, but be mature when it comes to spiritual things. Uh, from there, we go into verse 21. If someone can read verses 21 to 25, we'll just read that as one section. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 21 to 25. In the law, it is written, With men of all their tongues and other lips, I will speak to this people. And yet for all that, they will not hear me, says the Lord. Therefore, tongues are for a sign, not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. But prophesying is not for unbelievers, but for those who believe. Therefore, if the whole church comes together in one place and all speak with tongues, and there come in those who are uninformed or unbelievers, will they not say that you are out of your mind? But if all prophesy and an unbeliever or an uninformed person comes in, he is convinced by all, he is convicted by all. And thus the secrets of his heart are revealed. And so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is truly among you. Thank you. Um, so um, he again continues and um, and comes to the end of the section on tongues and prophecy. 
um, he goes back to a quotation in Isaiah. Uh, so it's Isaiah 28, 11 and 12. And he talks about how um, the, it's actually a verse of judgment uh, that God speaks on the people of Israel. So he's, uh, because they have not listened to the Lord when the Lord uh, has corrected them. He sent prophets to them. Uh, he is going to send uh, their enemies against them. And so the enemies will go and with the other tongues through the lips of foreigners, I will speak to its people. So uh, when their enemies capture them and uh, they are hearing these people speak another language, even then at that time, they won't listen to uh, the Lord. Um, so that is the uh, judgment that God speaks in Isaiah. In this case, uh, why is this verse quoted here? Uh, what he's saying is um, that when when someone is speaking in another language and someone hears it and doesn't understand it, doesn't listen to it, uh, that is a sign that they are an unbeliever. So just like in Isaiah, it proved uh, the hardness of the Israelites' hearts, that uh, they were even after they were given up to their uh, enemies, even after they were captured, they still would not turn to the Lord. Uh, um, this, this is talking about how when an unbeliever hears something in tongues, um, they will not recognize that it is a spiritual thing. To them, it will just sound like nonsense. And so it will uh, not only will it show that they are not a believer because they will not uh, they will not recognize it as something that is coming from the Holy Spirit, but also it will not make them a believer because they will uh, not understand what is being said and they will not be able to respond to it in faith. Uh, so that's what he goes on to say in verses um 20 verse 23 this is what he explains if the whole church comes together and everyone speaks in tongues and inquirers or unbelievers come in will they not say that you are out of your mind right so um if the whole church comes together so if everyone comes together in a church gathering and they're all speaking in tongues and someone comes from the outside, someone who is is in a place where they want to know or they they don't know about Jesus, but they are just coming to find out or they're just an unbeliever and they've come to this service. If they hear everyone speaking in tongues or they hear many people speaking in tongues, that is not going to have any impact on them. They are just going to think that this place is a gathering of crazy people and so they will leave there uh, still not believing and so that's why he says uh, it is a sign for not for believers but for unbelievers what does that mean that uh, it it is a sign means it shows that they are an unbeliever or proves that they are an unbeliever and with and they will remain an unbeliever even though they've heard you exercising that spiritual gift of tongues they will remain an unbeliever in this situation. Uh, on the other hand, if you are prophesying, here he says, prophecy is not for unbelievers, but for believers. Um, and then he explains, he explains the opposite scenario in verse 24. So if an unbeliever or an inquirer comes in while everyone is prophesying, they are convicted of sin and brought under judgment by all as the secrets of their hearts are laid bare. So they will fall down and worship God, exclaiming, God is really among you. Uh, so this is um, where he's saying this is a sign for, uh, not for unbelievers, but for believers. So when there is prophecy, uh, what happens is that an unbeliever can come in and because they can understand what is being said, uh, they, they will see that God is moving in this place and they will um, they will be convicted by the Holy Spirit because they will uh, 
they will see that what is within their own hearts is being exposed as people are prophesying, as people are speaking uh, what the spirit leads them to say. And that is what will bring them uh, to God, bring them to salvation. And therefore, they will become believers. And so uh, prophecy will lead them to belief. Uh, so, uh, so this is what he's encouraging them to do. He's saying, uh, instead of using tongues when you all gather without interpretation, uh, use prophecy so that uh, if uh, an unbeliever comes in, they too are benefited and they may see that God is at work in this place. Um, any questions on this? Uh, I just want a little more explanation on prophesying because in verse 22 it says it's not for unbelievers and in verse 24 we see that uh, unbelievers are being convicted and convinced because of the prophecy. So I believe both are in maybe different context or maybe it has difference in the meanings. So I just want you to explain me a little more. For the this. prophecy then? Yeah, in verse 22 yeah. in 24 i just want to know because it says prophesying is not for unbelievers and then but, we see in 24 uh they are prophesying so that uh, the unbelievers will be convinced and convicted yeah so uh here when we say they are a sign um what we can understand from this context which he what he's talking about is it's a sign meaning it proves the state of a person's heart right so in both uh, examples that he gives, 23, 24, an unbeliever is coming into the uh, gathering. An unbeliever or an inquirer is coming into the church gathering. Now, uh, if there are tongues, it exposes them as an unbeliever, but they also remain an unbeliever. So uh, it's a sign for uh, an unbeliever, meaning that it exposes that they are an unbeliever. and uh, it also um, kind of seals the fact that they remain an unbeliever when you use tongues because they leave their not being impacted. Whereas uh, if an unbeliever comes in and hears prophecy, um, it is a sign for them in the sense that it exposes them as an unbeliever because they are convicted of sin, but they do not leave an unbeliever. They leave a believer because they see that God is working there. So it says, when it says it's not for unbelievers, but for believers, it means that uh, it, it uh, will help somebody become a believer. So the prophecy will help somebody uh, move from being an unbeliever to become a believer. Whereas um, tongues will keep a person in a place of unbelief. Does that make sense? So when he's saying um, tongues is not for believers but for unbelievers, he's saying they will remain unbelievers when you're using tongues. But if you use prophecy, not it's not for unbelievers but for believers, is because through prophecy they will become a believer. Does that answer your question? Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, so that is, yeah, it is a little bit confusing because he's saying it's a sign and how we understand what he means by sign, uh, it's it's not used in a, the typical way the word sign is used, uh, but because he explains it further in verses 23, 24, and 25, um, we understand what he's talking about and using that quotation from Isaiah before this, uh, where when the tongue, when, even though tongues are used, uh, the people don't respond. They don't listen to what God is saying. Um, and so uh, through that context, you can understand what he's talking about. OK, so uh, from there, let's move on to the next section. Um, so in your notes, we, we also look at uh, tongues uh, being used, so there's a reference to in the book of Acts when uh, tongues was used 
and people came to faith. Now, that is a different use of tongues uh, where the Holy Spirit came and people were speaking in uh, the languages of the people uh, that had gathered there. It was not in the context of a local church gathering um, where you're gathered to worship. So uh, understanding that difference. So in the context in Acts is where tongues was used um, and other people could understand. Right. So there were um, people who were gathered in Jerusalem who heard uh, the disciples speaking in tongues and they could understand what was being said. Uh, so that is a different use of tongues in that case. Um, 26 to 33. Can somebody read that for us, please? Twenty-six to uh, thirty-three. Okay. Uh, First Corinthians chapter fourteen, verse twenty-six to thirty-three. How is it then, brethren? Whenever you come together, each of you has a psalm, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Let all things be done for edification. If anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be two or a the most three each in turn and let one interpret but if there is no interpreter let him keep silent in church and let him speak to himself and to god let two or three prophets speak and let the others judge but if anything is revealed to another who sits by let the first keep silent for you all you can all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be encouraged and the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets for god is not the author of confusion but of peace as in all the churches of the saints thank you so um we've seen in in all of the previous chapters paul is um giving them instructions about how they should gather as a church. Um, so what we've covered in the previous weeks as well with the uh, Lord's Supper, with the head covering. So he's continuing uh, that teaching, right? Uh, even what he's we just covered now and what he's continuing to cover. So he wants there to be proper order in these gatherings uh, because everyone's using their spiritual gifts. Everyone wants to pray in tongues. Everyone wants to prophesy. But if it's all happening simultaneously, there's a lot of confusion. Uh, no one's listening to the other person. Uh, so there's no real uh engagement that's happening with one another we are, they're not actually able to minister to one another everyone's just doing anything whenever they feel like doing if they have something they want to say they just stand up and say it uh and then someone may be saying something simultaneously so all of those things so he's just trying to uh give it order so that when they come together that whatever is being done is being done in a way that is um beneficial to people there isn't any confusion everyone's given a chance to uh, share what they have been inspired to share by the holy spirit to be able to uh, present that to the congregation and uh, the whole church benefits in that process uh, so verse uh, 26 he's saying how is it then brethren so that is um he, he's not asking, how is it that you have these gifts? He's saying, um, what shall we say? Or when we come together, how should we behave? Um, then he says, each of you has a psalm, a teaching, a tongue, a revelation. So each of them was coming with these things. And they were so eager to use their gifts uh, that they were all doing it uh, in any order, in any way they wanted. So uh, this is uh, an amazing thing uh, when we gather as a church for people to come with this kind of um, desire to bless one another and to come uh, with that revelation, with those spiritual gifts uh, that they want to impart what they have been blessed with to the rest of the church, right? So uh, this is something that we can be praying for, for our church gatherings, for our small group gatherings. So if if our churches have small groups or life groups uh, that gather to encourage 
um, the use of gifts in these settings where each person um, comes uh, having something to share, to contribute to the gathering. Um, it um, allows people to exercise their spiritual gifts. It allows people to do it in a safe environment where um, we can correct one another. Um, and it also then enables everyone to be fulfilling their role within the body of Christ. Uh, there isn't anyone who's just coming and um, just becoming a spectator or just receiving and going away. But everyone is coming, bringing their gifts, bringing their contribution uh, and building the rest of the body up. Um, so it's a, a beautiful thing to work towards. Um, so each one has a psalm, a teaching, a tongue, a revelation, an interpretation, and let all things be done for edification. So he constantly is reminding them what is the purpose of the gifts. The gifts are for edifying the church. Um, it is. Uh, it should come out of a place of love. So there's no place for boasting. There's no place for spiritual pride. Um, it's all for the benefit of the body, uh, all by the grace of God, all uh, given to us by the will of the Holy Spirit, um, and should all be done in love. And that's why that importance of uh, having interpretation, uh, all of those things is there. Uh, verse 27, um, so if anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be two. So he's saying, okay, now suppose right now someone has something that they want to say in tongues don't like 10 people stand up and all want to talk at the same time let two or three people at the most stand up and each of them take turns say what they have to say and let one person interpret okay so once all of them finish then if there are more people who want to speak in tongues then the next two or three people stand up, they share, and then it's interpreted. And then verse 28, again, the reminder, if there's no interpreter, let him keep silent in church and let him speak to himself and to God. Um, then verse 29, let two or three prophets speak and let the others judge. So just as he said, uh, with tongues, let two or three of them stand up, speak, let one interpret. And then you move on. You can have more people speak in tongues. Or if there is someone who wants to prophesy, let two or three prophets speak and let the others judge. So um, here as well, the importance of when there is a prophecy being given, that uh, we uh, don't blindly receive it, but we judge for ourselves. Is this coming from the Holy Spirit? Um, now, uh, this doesn't mean that if someone has prophesied and um, there is something incorrect about what they've said, or something that is not in line with uh, the word of God, something that uh, is not in line with the character of God, um, that doesn't mean that they are uh, they are evil or shouldn't be in the church or shouldn't be allowed to speak. Uh, we're all in a place of learning and growing in maturity. So there is place for error, which is why there is this importance of judging. So someone can share, they could be in error. And uh, as a church, you can correct them, um, whether how you choose to correct in what kind of setting is a, a different question. but. Um, we give space to people to share what they are led by the Spirit to share, what they feel led to share. And you judge whether this is uh, from the Holy Spirit, whether this is right, uh, whether this is true, whether it's in accordance with God's word, God's character, God's way of doing things. Um, um, and then verse 31, you can all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be encouraged, right? So everyone will get a chance to prophesy, right? You can all prophesy one by one so that all may learn and all may be encouraged. So uh, the importance of 
uh, everyone being blessed in this process, both the people who are uh, prophesying, the people who are using the gifts, as well as the people who are there uh, to hear what is being shared. Um, and the spirit of the prophets are subject to prophets. So that is also an important thing that God doesn't uh, overtake our own will, right? We have the will to keep quiet. We have the will to direct whatever God is giving us to say, to be able to say that when, when to say it, when to keep silent, all of those things. And so he says, uh, you have that power, that ability to control that. Um, we'll just, we're at 9.50, so we'll take a 10-minute break, um, and then we'll come back and continue from here. Thank you. <laughs> 